right, so ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we are Safas Unscripted and covering some Six Nations again. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. We appreciate everything you're doing for us. You're growing this channel at a good rate and we really appreciate it. And guys, we had a Six Nations that is really worthy about having a good chat about finally because we saw some results that we didn't see coming and I'm all for it. I'm really all for it. And I mean, first off, we can start with the, the Scotland and Italy game. As we all know, Italy winning that one 31 points to 29, I believe. And wow, guys, the Italians are looking like they are not going to get the wooden spoon this year. What yeah, so, so, so firstly, we have got to hold our hands up high and apologize because we said it's probably the most predictable a tournament's ever been. And then kind of the way that our predictions went, we got all three wrong. Now, I know France were the favorites, but all of us predicted either a draw or the Welsh victory. And then obviously we had two massive upsets. So um, kudos to to the Six Nations for actually bringing us some, some unpredictable score lines. But yeah, Italy, massive victory. You can just see the emotion after the game, what it meant to those players. Uh, Negri there on the, on the field crying after the game and stuff. It just shows you what it means to them as a country, especially um, even us had some doubts. Can they do it two weekends in a row, right? It, it's tough to pull out two massive performances in a row, um, especially since you didn't get it over the line the previous time. But for them to get it over the line this time against Scotland at Murrayfield, was it? It was at Mar No, it wasn't at Murrayfield. It was in Italy, right? Yes. But still, either way. Absolutely massive for them. Congratulations to them. Uh, and that means they don't get the wooden spoon. Well, no, they still really can. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, just to interrupt. Sorry. Um, but they still can get the wooden spoon. Uh, Italy sit on seven points. Wales sit on three. If I'm correct, Italy do play Wales next weekend. And that will basically decide wooden spoon. But uh, Wales will have to win quite convincingly to... to to really yeah. get it. So, yeah, sorry. Bro. I read an article today where the guy said, the one of the Italians said, Where are these people now that called for us to get relegated? Where are they now? We're waiting for you. So, it's quite an interesting take that they, I don't know, they, they, they win their first game in like 145,000 years and then they get cocky about it. Like, just, just relax. You still got another game. And you might still come last, so um, stay humble. If, even if they don't come last, I didn't even know about that. Like, you can, a victory can mean a lot to you, but no need to, to all of a sudden be cocky and stuff because getting it Italy relegated wasn't the worst shout that we've heard in the world because they haven't won any games and stuff. There, there was, there was a, there was a good build up for for the the comments to be made to listen to say, listen, okay, let's get Italy out of here. They just literally taking damage that's all that they're doing so so to get one victory doesn't change everything but hopefully it's like a a start a, a base for you to start building forward that it was a massive victory but don't get cocky okay yeah. <laughs> it doesn't change a lot but obviously look scotland did go into that game with a team that was worthy of being well it was their first team i'm mean, a lot of i mean finn russell obviously starting duan van der Merwe, carl stein their, their first choices were there and we got to credit the the Italians for getting over the line because, as we've seen, that Scottish side can be dangerous at times. And usually they should have enough experience to get over the line in this type of game. But I think from what we saw with the Italians against the All Blacks in the World Cup, where it was an absolute hammering to what we're seeing now, I think there's massive growth in Italian rugby, which is obviously massive for them and we want to see the italians grow even more but like you say we can't you know it's one result and now you got it's two results so a good draw against france a draw i mean a win against scotland and now you just need to keep building it's all about consistency and that's what the italians have lacked for so long but obviously moving on now to probably the before, game before but, yeah. before we move on i just wanted to to mention something else which was big right there was no caveats behind this one, right? So there was a kind of a little caveat behind the, the French game, uh, where they could have said, "Listen, it is a it's a it's a dull down French team. There's no Dupont, there's no Intermark, there's a lot of injuries and stuff." This was a full strength Scotland team, 
and they beat the Scotland team that people were hyping up for that final game against Ireland to maybe cause the upset victory. So that that just puts it just makes the victory that much more beautiful, right? Like the, the nice storyline would have been to beat France, but I think this is almost better than having to beat France that had the the bunch of injuries and stuff. So so yeah, credit to them. You can go on to the next game. Yeah. Well we move on to the game of the of the Six Nations and the weekend we can say. Ireland versus England. England get the job done with a Marcus Smith drop goal in overtime to win it 23 points to 22. And I said it in the preview. Obviously, I, pre- I did predict an Ireland win. But I said the English need to get in get in their faces, you know. And you could see that their rush defense was so much better. It's like they're almost kind of try- starting to understand their rush defense from, from Felix Jones. And, you know, they're starting to understand the concept. And, Boys, England did it. I mean, what are we what are we saying about that? Okay, anyone go for it. <laughs> I'll I'll go. I'll go again. Listen, I, I've given Ireland a lot of respect on, on this channel, on the personal channels as well. Like, obviously, we banter them a bit and stuff. I don't think Ireland were that bad. I I'll give full credit to you how good England was yesterday. I really think they got the defensive line correct. They did what we said before the game. They actually went and, and attacked with intent. They ran at, at the Irish line. They got their offloads away. They really looked like they wanted to, to, to attack and, and score some tries. That's why the ball went to Waboso so many times. That's why the ball went to Tommy Friedman. Uh, you saw, what's it, Ollie Lawrence really getting into the, into, the, um, into the attacking line and carrying the ball. That is, that is what we asked England to do. And that's what they did. And they really put um, what's an island under a lot under a lot of pressure. The only time that Ireland really had the ball in that first 20 minutes was when they had it in their, in their own half where they had to kick the ball again. So brilliant performance by England. Really got the um, got the defensive line and the attack, attacking uh, tactics correct in this one. And, and you can't do anything else other than give them credit for that performance. Yeah, if, if Ireland... If Ireland were deemed the number one team in the world, does that make England the number one team in the world now? Because they beat no, because the Scotland beat England, so that means Scotland's number one in the world, right? But Italy yeah. beat Scotland, so does that make Italy number one in the world? Yeah, no, because every single article or uh, interview I saw after the game was every Englishman talking about we beat the best team in the world, we beat the number one team in the world, the best team didn't pitch up today. I'm like, but the best team is sitting in. They're probably in Johannesburg at their houses. So what you on about? Um, so I was quite annoyed by the antics after the game from the English. So ignorant. And yes, they won the game against Ireland, which is probably the best team in Europe. But um, just take it easy, man. Take a back step and move on with your life. Well, look, I think... There has to be credit given because, as we know, Ireland is a is is that well. If if you look at the rankings, and that's what everyone should look at, I guess, and they are second, and the English beat the second best team in the world according to rankings. And flip, I, I said to to my mates from the UK, I said, you guys actually looked like a rugby team again. You know, we saw attack from England. We saw them playing out wide, we didn't just see, you know, the way I thought they may have approached the game, which was the way they approached the game against us. But uh, we saw a lot of progress for England. And do we see England kicking on now? Do we see them? Because obviously, we'll obviously get into the predictions video at another time for the next round. But obviously, they have France next at, at in France. And obviously, that's always a tough game, no matter what the French are going through. Um, do we see the English kicking on and performing like that again, not giving away a prediction, but the style of play they bring? If, we, if well, England can get another four or five Ben Earls, then I think they could be a team to be reckoned with, a force to be reckoned with. But I think this was a one-hit wonder. I, they, they've been hot and cold prob- probably since Borthwick's taken over. They would play a brilliant performance against... South Africa in the semi-finals of the World Cup and then come Six Nations and they'd be absolute dog shit with the same people, bar Farrell. So I think it's a too hot and cold team. Um, I do, however, I must admit that I'm a, becoming a bit of a Ben Earl fan. Like, he's he's the real deal. I, I 
agree totally with Brett. Literally, word for word, said exactly what I was also going to say. I, I like the big thing is they need to to get some consistency, and they they figured out a game plan that worked for them against what on earth that they figured out a, a game plan that worked against South Africa, and then kind of threw it out the window. Even though they nearly got that result, threw it out the window, became dog shit again. Then they got a game plan now that worked against Ireland. They finally got it over the line, and now it's, can they take it forward, right? But Ben Earl, what a player. Absolutely scintillating. We put him on the list for can he become a world player of the year. And if England somehow take this as momentum to go forward and actually get some consistency and get some big victories and stuff, he will definitely be up there because he is the best English player at the moment. And it's not even close. Yeah, they've got a couple of other talented people, but that guy was extraordinary yesterday and in every other game this far. There's two guys, if you if we had to make like a combined uh, 15 for the Six Nations this far, that really get in there. And that's him, Ben Earl, and Tommy Rafael from, from Wales. That's the two people that has to be in there. And I just want to give some credit to Ireland, right? Because they were played off the park, in my opinion. But somehow, they did what good teams do and, like, stay in the game. They never really... They, and they led for most of the game. That is kind of what good good teams do. So they are they are still a good team. But after that performance from them this weekend, or wow, uh, England kind of nullified them. I'm feeling a lot more confident going into July. And I'm not trying to be cocky, but it is the truth, right? They they looked very beatable yesterday. Yeah, I think the thing Ireland really struggled with yesterday was how good England's rush defense was. Um, obviously, they couldn't get their you know, pass, loop around type, that type of, you know, their structured, not, not what we see so often from them. Um, and at times they did get around the English defense, but the English should, just had a lot of like commitment to say like, listen, you may get past us on the outside, but we're going to make a, a, a committed effort to still make the tackle. And, and so obviously England played one, played their best game in, I don't know how long, um, even I'm sure they'll look at that and say, like, we obviously want to play that brand of rugby rather than the brand of rugby they saw against the Springboks in that semi-final, even though it was such a close game. But if I look at the table now, um, Ireland sit on 16 points and England sit on 12 points. So and it's not looking like Ireland are going to throw the Six Nations out the window um, unless something goes drastically wrong um, against Scotland. But England can be proud of, you know, we all said England could be heading possibly for a wooden spoon. There were talks of that. I don't, I don't think any of us said that, but there was a lot of media saying, listen, England could be heading for the wooden spoon. And here they are sitting in second with still a possible chance to win the Six Nations, even though it's not looking likely. Are you guys thinking, I know you said it's a one-off result, but do you see England taking strides towards being one of the better teams in the Northern Hemisphere, or do you really think they're going to go back to what we saw in the World Cup, even though well, they made the semifinals? It, it, it's it's tough, right? Because we'll, we'll have to see next week. But as we just saw with the, with the performance between France and Wales, that was France's best performance as well. For the, for the first time, they actually looked like... Obviously, they struggled in the start, but looking at that second half, they absolutely obliterated Wales. So... Now you've got France, maybe, just maybe, could find some form again or take some confidence from that. But then also England as well. So it, it's tough. It, it's really tough. I don't I don't believe Borthwick is a good enough coach. I, I think that is where England's issues lie. So um, it's, it's a bit harsh, maybe. So I just don't see them really kicking on. I think it was more of a one-off performance. Maybe the performances slowly increase. But I don't think they can perform like that every week, which is needed on a good team. Yeah, I just want to raise something as well that that quite concerned me about the Irish team as a whole. Um, if you look back at their at their history, they've always had a, pr a phenomenal and a prominent goal kicker in a Ronan O'Gara, then a Johnny Sexton, and now they don't have that. And if you look at the French team, the Springbok team, um, every team that that's doing phenomenal phenomenally they have a very prolific goal kicker that doesn't miss and to miss that many kicks in a in a do or die um, test match 
for Ireland is just that's unacceptable, and they some of those kicks weren't hard. So that that's that should be a major concern because that as a player that relieves stress, that relieves pressure from you. Okay, cool. Now we we up by one. Now it's not oh shucks we we missed. We down by one. So now we have to change this and this and this. So I think they need to seriously look into that. Yeah, um, obviously, I mean, we all said it for the Springboks in our World Cup campaign. Like, as much as Marnie Libok is the guy to take the Springboks forward, and we all know that, Henry Pollard was crucial in that World Cup because of his goal kicking, and we all said that from the beginning, and it's the same in any mm-hmm. test match. Take your points. I mean, it's that it's that necessary. Like, it's not URC, Super Rugby, Pro, pro 14 type rugby this is test match rugby and every single point matters and we saw that against England and Ireland but moving on to the last game of the weekend we literally just filming after we've watched it um, Wales took on France in the at the principality we I called the Wales win casual called the Wales win and Brett called the draw and it was looking like in, in the 60th minute it was looking like we were all going to be maybe one of us were going to be correct but in the last 20, Wales go and throw it away and France win the game 45 points to 24. And look, we can, and, and kudos to France. Obviously, they picked up their socks in that last 20. But again, the first 60, they are struggling against Wales, losing against Wales, and again, heading towards another defeat or close result. But I think the scoreline flatters them because Wales kind of just opened up their defence and said, you can come and score as many tries as you want in the last 20. I don't know how you guys saw it. I think, I don't think either team played bad. I think it was a great game of rugby. I think both teams really stepped up their game and performed. Um, yeah, there was a lot of points, so maybe the defensive line wasn't there. But I, I was impressed with, with the, it looked like there was a lot more chemistry in the back line with, with France. They looked like they had more intent. Their scrum was very physical. And then you look at, at Wales, they they didn't have a million chances, but they really used their chances. Their defence, even though they conceded 45 points, most of that is in the uh, final 20 minutes. So their defence was up to it. Tommy Rafael was a, was a menace at the breakdown. Um, Aaron Wainwright, once again, just deciding to be everywhere on the field. Uh, everywhere all at once. I don't even care. This guy, that guy was, um, he's just a pit bull. He's just, him and Tommy Rafael, both absolutely crazy. Rio Dyer had a good performance. Rio Dyer is, for me, one of the most underrated wings in the world at the moment. He might not get, a, get the accolades because he doesn't score a billion tries, but he's a workhorse of a winger. He's quick, he's fast. Oh, well, he's quick, fast, strong, everything that, that you kind of want in a winger. So, I, I, I just think it was a good game of rugby and they and they fell apart at the end. Scoreline flatters flatters France maybe, but overall deserved victory because they blew them away in that last twenty. So Yeah, my my concern was okay, so I'm gonna be that negative Nelly again because the the commentary of this game actually almost killed it for me. I was I know we got a person in this pod that that has bias in his name, but I mean every time the Welsh would would do something great, the commentators would come alive. But when the French did something great, then they downplay it. Like that scrum off that got man of the match from France. I forget how to say his name. But he Legarette. threw that backhand sorry? Legarec or something. Yes. So he threw that backhand pass that I thought was absolutely phenomenal. And the commentators Insane. downplayed Yeah, commentators downplayed it saying um, that went nowhere near he was aiming for. Where the heck was he aiming for then? There was nowhere else it could have gone. And that just it, it annoyed me. And then, then there were some patches about the French team in that first half that I thought these Oaks don't even want to be here. Like they feel like they just want to get the Six Nations over and done. And I think, I don't know what happened at halftime, but they, they, their coach that wears a suit with sneakers, he probably said, I don't have fashion sense. You guys don't have right ball sense. Let's, let's maybe better that. And you guys just go kick Wales butt because something <laughs> changed at last 25 minutes. And that was the French team that we all love and, and, and know. Yeah. So, I wouldn't say love, I mean, but yeah, that's the French yeah, team. Yeah, the, the fans <laughs> sometimes tend to make the whole world kind of angry because, look, if we just give a quick look at it next, at, it is next week by the looks of it, last round of the Six Nations. Obviously, we have the wooden spoon decider between Wales and Italy. It is going to be played at the Principality in Wales, 
which makes me think, obviously we get into predictions at another time, but it makes me think Italy will have to be at their very best to make sure they avoid any kind of wooden spoon here because Wales, we know, as they've shown us throughout the Six Nations, they can do it. And if you, are, if you aren't careful, they will do it. So Italy do have to be at their best there. Obviously, the Ireland-Scotland game, but after watching that Italian-Scotland game, we all now really think and say, wow, are, are Scotland in trouble here? Because we saw what happened in the World Cup and we all thought Scotland would do somewhat all right and they just didn't. And it's kind of like the same scenario here because top four is separated by five points. So it, it's anyone's game at this stage. And at, but we still think, you know, Ireland will have too much there. And obviously another big, massive game and people don't realize the English aren't too fond of the French. And that's just a national history thing. And France versus England is always going to be a very feisty game, especially when it's in France their supporters doing what they do best, trying to get the ref on their side, that type of behavior. So it's going to be a last round to really look out for, especially if it's going to be anything like the round we just watched. I mean, unpredictable. Maybe there is a, a new Six Nations winner, we don't know. But last thoughts on this weekend's results, as well as what, what we may think will happen going into the next one. I just know... It's set up nicely because it's first going to be Ireland versus Scotland and then France versus England. So if Scotland pulls off the upset victory and wins that game by eight points and restricts Ireland to less than four tries, England have it all to play for. If they get five points from that French game in France, that would, then they win the whole thing, right? So mm -hmm. <laughs> I know England hates Scotland, right? They, they literally hate them. But I think every English person on this planet will be a Scottish fan. And they'd say, listen, we already did the damage once. You just do it again. Okay? But no, I don't, I don't think Ireland falls twice. They are too good of a team at the moment to, to slip up twice. And not, certainly not losing to Scotland, who just lost to Italy. Yeah, I, I'm not going to I'm not gonna give my two cents on this these games yet coming up because... For all we know, a guy like um, Gibson Park or somebody can break his ankle at practice and then that changes a lot of things. And then I'd, I'll wait for the squads to come out and see who, who what combinations are selected. Because knowing that it's Italian coach, he might swap his centers around because they play so phenomenally. Might put them on the wing to change the game plan. So I'm not... I, I, I've, I've no interest in, in commenting on that game yet. What I, whatever, whatever I would say is I want people to subscribe to this channel. <laughs> okay, we'll call okay. it on that one as well. Yeah. But, but let me just say, we touch wood on the Gibson Park breaking his ankle. Um, hopefully that doesn't happen. But, you know, the universe is a crazy place and we touch wood. Um, but... That's it, ladies and gents. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm super. I'm superstitious. Sorry. Clearly. Um, yeah. I, I'm always all, all for player safety. You know. I'm just. I'm, I'm, yeah. But anyway, moving on. Um, also, a quick shout out to the guy on the left here. If you know club rugby in um, Johannesburg, their side. Um, he plays for Wanderers. If any of you do know Wanderers, and they had a promotion relegation game. In a game that everyone thought they would lose, they won and they smashed it. So congrats to Mr. Burns on his side, staying up in the big leagues. Um, but anyway, with that, we end off the, the podcast. Thank you guys so much for, oh, there's the fireworks celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Please like, share, subscribe. We really appreciate it. Follow all the socials. We really, really appreciate you guys. And we will see you next time with probably a fun video or another URC review or something, but we'll see you soon. Cheers. Okay, bye. Cheers.